Thank you, sir. Sir, I welcome this historic decision taken by the government. And I want to point out that in the run-up to the 2014 general elections, the Prime Minister had promised transformational change in the economy. The people of India believed him, believed in the NDA, and that is how we came to power with a thumping majority. And it is this change that is now being ushered in step by step. Whether it was the auction of the coal mines or spectrum, which was done in a transparent manner, or now the GST, which will change the face of our economy, and then eliminating black money, which is linked to corruption through this step, I think the people of India are welcoming it. Sir, we must understand the genesis of the problem. How was so much black money created in the country? I go back to the time of Mr. Nehru, and many of my friends sitting across would recall, there was an allegation that Mr. K. D. Malviya had taken 5,000 rupees for elections, and he had to resign. That was the kind of money which was then in the system. I remember my late father, he was very close to the then Prime Minister, Mrs. Gandhi. When the 67 election was fought, the total money available at Mrs. Gandhi's command was 18 lakhs. Motilalji, you've run Congress party affairs thereafter, or the, the Treasury. And I tell you a very interesting thing. At that time, it was said that the syndicate has collected 80 lakhs of rupees, and they will capture the, the votes through money power. This was the kind of money that was then available in the system. Thereafter, as time passed on, Mrs. Gandhi was advised by some socialist friends that the way to end disparity in this country would be to raise income taxes and apply wealth tax. And the marginal rate of income tax was then brought up to 90%. On top of that, there was 2% wealth tax, which meant that if you earned even 3 lakhs a year, you were in the 90% category, and you had to pay wealth tax on top of that, so actually, you were paying something like 98 or 99 percent of your income in taxes. That is when the generation of black money started. And this has been witnessed all over the world. Whenever taxation rates are very high, black money is created. Even in some European countries, this phenomena has been witnessed. <coughs> Sir, black money and corruption are always linked. As I said, moving on from Mrs. Gandhi's time or towards the end of her regime, one started hearing of some scams, whether it was the rag import scam or some defense deals which were then talked about or the Russian wheat, wheat deals which then were very much in the news, black money started getting generated. And it started, this cancer which came in, started affecting all organs of society. But the real impetus to this really came in the last 10, 12 years, when we saw the Commonwealth scam, we saw the 2G scam, we saw the coal scam, and that is where Huge bribes were paid, which are always in black. And that generation started. And the resultant bribes went into the real estate sector, where the boom came, and more black money got created. That, sir, created a parallel economy, 
which was creating havoc in the system. And the government has to correct this because if you don't do it now, <coughs> your future generations will suffer. Sir, this also started creating social tensions, ostentatious display of wealth. We are witnessing today how a wedding is taking place in the South. All this is creating a lot of tensions in, so in society. And as I said earlier, that this black money has affected every organ, be it our politics, elections have become so expensive, and it hurts everybody, be it the media. Today, all of us are victims of the paid media. That is the biggest expense in, at election time. So obviously, the Prime Minister is duty bound to correct it. Sir, this government and the Prime Minister announced river cleaning program. This is also an extension of that. The river of the economy is being cleansed with this step. Sir, the money that is now going to be collected or which is now being deposited in the banks will be used to fund the farmers, small businessmen, startups, and all that section which requires the need, which is in need of bank finance. Sir, I agree, this has caused a lot of pain all around. My state is also suffering. Everybody is suffering. But, sir, I just want to give one or two examples. Even when a child is born, the mother goes through pain. But then, after that pain, comes the joy. The, the kind of joy that the child then brings to the family all around. When a patient is very sick, the patient is given intravenous, which causes pain. But it is that intravenous elect, uh, uh, injection which eventually cures the patient. So this is what the government is trying to do. And I'm sure our future generations will reap a lot of benefit from what the government is doing. I know. Sir, yeah. I, yeah. as I sense. said earlier, I empathize and my party empathizes with those who have suffered and I have a few suggestions for the government. First of all, cooperative banks have now been barred from giving money. Sir, this is causing a huge problem to the farmer. My chief minister has written to the prime minister. Sir Prakashan Badal has urged both the finance minister and the prime minister that please allow the farmer to go to the cooperative banks to change his money, and this must be done immediately. Second, sir, private hospitals are not being allowed to collect cash. Of course, the statement made by one of the secretaries was that they can convert money, but it's very simple. You collect the PAN number of the patient or the person who's paying the money and let them deposit the money. Why should a patient suffer? Sorry? But then how will you collect three, four lakhs in cash? You, they can always take. Uh, please, yeah, Naresh ji, uh, you need not reply to me. You address the chair, please. Sorry, sir. Please. Sir, similarly, this is the marriage season all over the country. And I've urged the finance minister before also, and I urge him again. Any family that has a marriage in the family must be allowed to withdraw at least two lakhs of rupees because there are difficulties being faced and the government must come to their aid. Similarly, mobile ATM should be sent to remote villages so that farmers and people living in remote areas do not suffer. Sir, one more thing I would like to mention, which I hope the finance minister will pay attention to, that there have been reports in the newspapers that if you, and chartered accountants have said this, that if you deposit any amount of money in the bank, as the law stands, you only have to pay 30% tax, and there can be no penalties. The Honorable Finance Minister has said that there are 200% penalties, 
But chartered accountants have given their opinion that as the law exists today, unless they come with a retrospective law in the next budget, as the law stands today, there is no such uh, penalty. I would hope that the finance minister would reply to this point. Second, sir, I have a suggestion. Today, there are brokers, touts, fixers who are fixing deals. They say you give one crore, take jewelry worth 70 lakhs, take property worth 70 lakhs. Put an end to all this. And my suggestion is, like you had the scheme where you said pay 45% tax and the balance is yours, now you make it 65% tax and the balance goes to the person who deposits the money, but don't give them cash. Give them a three-year bond. So you will have 100% money. These fixers and touts and brokers will all be eliminated. And this way, a lot of money will come to the system. Please. Naresh ji, please come. I just take one second, sir. Sir, in the end, again, I would urge the government, the problem is serious. And I know that the pain will not go away in the next week or 10 days. So whatever few suggestions I made, I hope the government will take them seriously and act upon them. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you, Mr. Nareshti. Uh, Mr. Prem Chand Kurta, <coughs> not present. Mr. Joy Abraham, Absolutely. not present. Mr. Sanjeev Kumar, Absolutely. not present. Dr. Keshav Rao. Uh, Mr. Finance Minister, what he said was right, about 30% uh, if money is deposited, 30% will be given. Naresh Ji. So there is an <clears throat> existing law which will apply. And uh, whatever are the provisions in existing law, I think what Mr. Gujral is referring to, if somebody declares it as a part of his current income, when current income is taxable at uh, uh, the rates provided in the Income Tax Act, but if the current income suddenly becomes 5,000% of last year's income, then will it be treated as current income or otherwise? Thank you. Yes. 